for human habitation on the moon. We can help, we can join with, together we can explore the moon and develop the moon. Compared to the general population, only a select few have experienced the rare privilege of walking on the moon. Buzz Aldrin, the second person to set foot on the lunar surface, belongs to this exclusive group. For years, Aldrin remained silent about the discoveries made during the mission to the far side of the moon. However, shortly before his passing, the esteemed astronaut decided to share his revelations. Stay tuned to uncover the shocking details Buzz Aldrin disclosed about the far side of the moon particularly the South Pole, which is the mysterious region on the far side of the moon. In his tweet before his death, he wrote, We are all in danger from evil at the South Pole. Buzz Aldrin was born on January 20th, 1930 in Montclair, New Jersey as Edwin Eugene Aldrin Jr. His father, a colonel in the U.S. Air Force and an aviation pioneer who had flown with Orville Wright, had a significant influence on his upbringing. One lesser known fact about Aldrin is that his mother's maiden name was Marion Moon, which seemed to foreshadow his destiny. Following in his father's footsteps, Aldrin pursued a career as an Air Force pilot and underwent jet fighter training in 1951. He distinguished himself during the Korean War, flying 66 combat missions in F-86 Sabre aircraft and successfully downing two MiG-15 jets. For his bravery and skill, he was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross twice. After the war, Aldrin served as a flight instructor and worked as an aide to the Dean of Faculty at the U.S. Air Force Academy. Later, he pursued further education at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, where he embarked on a doctoral program in astronautics. His dissertation focused on line-of-sight guidance techniques for manned orbital rendezvous, a crucial problem for future space missions. In 1963, he earned his Doctor of Science degree, making him the first astronaut to hold a doctoral degree. Later that year, Aldrin joined NASA's third group of astronauts alongside Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and nine others. He underwent intense physical and mental training and preparation for space exploration. Additionally, he played a key role in developing spacecraft docking and rendezvous procedures, as well as extravehicular activity techniques. Aldrin's inaugural spaceflight occurred in 1966 on Gemini 12, the final mission of the Gemini program. Serving as the spacecraft's pilot, he worked alongside James Lavelle, the command pilot. Together, they achieved the first successful docking with an Agena target vehicle, showcasing the viability of orbital rendezvous. Aldrin also conducted three spacewalks, accumulating a record-breaking 5 hours and 30 minutes outside the spacecraft, demonstrating humans' ability to function effectively in the vacuum of space. However, it was Aldrin's second flight, Apollo 11, the inaugural mission to land humans on the moon, that propelled him into the spotlight. The Apollo 11 mission stands as a monumental achievement, marking humanity's first steps on the moon. It represented the culmination of extensive research, development, and testing conducted by NASA and its collaborators. Despite encountering numerous challenges, risks, and uncertainties, the mission also yielded numerous triumphs, discoveries, and innovations. Initiated as part of the Apollo program, launched in response to the Soviet Union's strides in space exploration, the Apollo 11 mission was a pivotal moment in history. President John F. Kennedy's 1961 challenge to land a man on the moon and safely return him to Earth before the decade's end set the stage for this remarkable feat. As the fifth crewed mission of the Apollo program and the first aimed at lunar landing, Apollo 11 carried the weight of lofty ambitions. Its primary objective was to demonstrate humanity's capability to explore and navigate the lunar surface. Moreover, the mission boasted scientific goals including the collection of lunar samples, deployment of experiments, and capture of photographs. Through its endeavors, Apollo 11 sought to unlock mysteries surrounding the moon's origins, history, and geological composition. Additionally, it aimed to assess the lunar environment's impact on human physiology and performance. The mission held significant symbolic and political importance, representing a major triumph for the United States and a milestone for humanity. Apollo 11 accomplished its primary objective of landing two astronauts on the moon and bringing them back safely to Earth on July 20, 1969. Neil Armstrong took the first historic step on the lunar surface, 
followed by Buzz Aldrin 19 minutes later. During their approximately two and a half hours outside the Lunar Module Eagle, they conducted various tasks and activities. These included planting the American flag, communicating with President Nixon via radio, deploying scientific experiments like a laser-ranging retroreflector and a passive seismic experiment, collecting around 22 kilograms of lunar rocks and soil, and capturing hundreds of photographs. Additionally, they received a plaque bearing the inscription, Here men from the planet Earth first set foot upon the moon, July 1969 AD. We came in peace for all mankind. The Apollo 11 mission showcased numerous technical innovations and surmounted various engineering and scientific challenges. Notably, the Saturn V rocket, the most potent rocket ever constructed at that time, propelled the spacecraft into orbit and beyond. There was also the command module Columbia, the primary spacecraft carrying the three astronauts, providing life support, communication, navigation, and re-entry systems. Additionally, there was the lunar module Eagle, a separate spacecraft transporting two astronauts between orbit and the lunar surface. Let's not forget the lunar rover, a battery-powered vehicle enabling astronauts to explore the moon more extensively and swiftly. Equally vital was the portable life support system. Resembling a backpack, furnishing oxygen, cooling, and communication for astronauts during extravehicular activities. However, the mission encountered technical challenges jeopardizing its success. For instance, a computer alarm was triggered during the lunar module's descent, indicating data overload. This alarm stemmed from a faulty switch sending unnecessary radar signals to the computer. Despite the setback, flight controllers proceeded with the landing after confirming the computer's continued functionality. During the final moments of landing, a fuel shortage arose, compelling Armstrong to manually guide the lunar module to a safer location. With a mere 25 seconds of fuel remaining, the lunar module touched down. Additionally, a malfunctioning circuit breaker hindered the activation of the ascent engine. Aldrin ingeniously utilized a pen to push the circuit breaker, initiating the engine. Furthermore, a communication blackout ensued during re-entry due to air ionization around the command module, extending beyond the expected duration by approximately 4 minutes, inducing anxiety among flight controllers and spectators. Communication was only re-established upon parachute deployment. The relief at NASA HQ must have been palpable. Apollo 11 encountered numerous close calls, exemplified by a docking issue following the translunar injection maneuver, which propelled the spacecraft towards the moon. The docking mechanism between the command module and the lunar module initially malfunctioned, requiring multiple attempts to establish a secure connection. Additionally, a trajectory error occurred following lunar orbit insertion, a maneuver that placed the spacecraft into orbit around the moon. This error stemmed from a faulty valve that released excessive propellant from the service module. However, subsequent corrective maneuvers successfully rectified the error, adjusting the orbit accordingly. During the final approach of the lunar module, a landing site discrepancy arose. The computer-selected landing site proved unsuitable due to its rugged terrain filled with boulders and craters. Armstrong intervened, assuming manual control to navigate the lunar module to a smoother area while evading obstacles and monitoring fuel levels. The Apollo 11 mission showcased a remarkable display of human exploration and achievement. It underscored the capabilities and potential of space technology and science alongside the bravery and expertise of astronauts and ground crew. The mission served as inspiration for generations, encouraging individuals to pursue their dreams and explore the unknown. Furthermore, it broadened horizons and paved the way for future missions and discoveries both on the moon and beyond. As for Aldrin's experiences and observations on the moon, what did he witness and feel during his time there? How did he describe the dark side of the moon, a region perpetually hidden from Earth's view? In his interviews, Aldrin recounted some of his impressions and memories from his lunar expedition. Contrary to its name, the dark side of the moon isn't perpetually dark. It only appears dark when it's turned away from the sun, a phenomenon occurring every 29.5 days. When illuminated by the sun, it's just as bright as the near side. Nonetheless, it remains shrouded in mystery, boasting numerous unexplored craters and features untouched by human exploration or probes. Aldrin expressed his fascination with the dark side of the moon, expressing a desire to see more of it. He described feeling a profound sense of awe and wonder as he beheld it from orbit. 
The physical characteristics of the dark side of the moon are captivating and varied, offering insights into the satellite's history and evolution. Also referred to as the far side of the moon, it constantly faces away from Earth, presenting a stark contrast to the near side. Due to synchronous rotation in the moon's orbit, the far side's landscape is rugged, marked by countless impact craters and few flat dark lunar maria or seas resembling barren regions elsewhere in the solar system, such as Mercury or Callisto. Notably, it features one of the largest craters in the solar system, the South Pole Aiken Basin. One notable aspect of the far side of the moon is the scarcity of large maria, in stark contrast to the abundant presence of these features on the near side. Maria, expansive flat regions resembling seas from a distance, likely form from cooled lava following ancient volcanic eruptions that inundated large basins. The reason behind the relative dearth of Maria on the far side remains incompletely understood. However, several potential explanations have been proposed. It's suggested that the crust on the far side might be thicker compared to the near side, hindering magma's ascent to the surface. Additionally, the lower temperatures on the far side may diminish the heat necessary for volcanic activity. The formation of the South Pole Aitken Basin, resulting from a significant impact event, likely disrupted the lunar mantle and altered magma distribution. Another prominent feature on the far side is the prevalence of numerous impact craters, circular indentations formed by collisions with asteroids, comets, or other celestial bodies. These craters vary in size, shape, and depth depending on the factors such as impactor speed, angle, and mass. Some craters exhibit central peaks, raised sections of the crater floor formed by rebounding after compression. Others display rays, bright streaks of ejected material radiating outward from the crater rim. Certain craters exhibit secondary craters, smaller indentations formed by debris ejection from larger primary craters. Notable examples on the far side of the moon include the South Pole Aiken Basin, the Korolev Crater, the Tsiolkovsky Crater, and the Moscow Vienz. The South Pole Aitken Basin stands out as one of the oldest and largest impact basins in the solar system, stretching approximately 2,500 kilometers in diameter and reaching depths of around 13 kilometers. Covering nearly a quarter of the moon's far side and extending into portions of the near side, this basin is believed to have formed some 4 billion years ago due to the impact of a massive asteroid or comet. Its immense size and depth offers glimpses of the lunar mantle hidden beneath the crust and significantly influence the moon's gravity and topography. Moving on to the Korolev Crater, situated near the lunar north pole, it spans roughly 437 kilometers in diameter. Named after Sergei Korolev, a prominent Soviet rocket engineer and spacecraft designer, this crater commemorates his contributions to space exploration, including the launch of the Sputnik 1, Luna 3, the first probe to photograph the far side of the moon, and Yuri Gagarin, the first human in space. With a smooth floor possibly filled with lava or ice and a prominent central peak towering about 3 kilometers or 1.9 miles above its surroundings, the Tsiolkovsky Crater stands out as a significant feature near the lunar equator, spanning approximately 185 kilometers or 115 miles in diameter. It bears the name of Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, a Russian physicist and spaceflight pioneer renowned for his contributions to rocketry principles. This crater boasts a dark floor, sharply contrasting with its bright rim and walls, and hosts a complex central peak composed of multiple smaller peaks. On the far side of the moon, the Moscow Vienz stands as one of the few Maria stretching about 277 kilometers or 172 miles in diameter. Named after Moscow, the capital city of Russia, it resides within a vast impact basin partially submerged under lava, forming a distinctive feature on the lunar surface. It boasts a distinctive oval shape and a reddish hue. Aldrin also recounted the eerie silence he encountered on the dark side of the moon. He described experiencing profound quietness, unable to communicate with Earth or his crewmate Collins in the command module as it orbited the moon. Despite feeling isolated and alone, Aldrin found peace and serenity in the solitude. He found solace in listening to his own heartbeat and breathing, feeling a connection with a higher power. Additionally, the dark side of the moon is exceptionally cold with Aldrin noting a stark contrast between its hot and cold regions as he transitioned from sunlight to shadow. 
He described feeling the temperature plummet by hundreds of degrees within seconds, necessitating adjustments to his suit. Aldrin expressed gratitude for his suit's cooling system, acknowledging that without it, he would have succumbed to the intense solar radiation. The dark side of the moon remains one of the solar system's most enigmatic and captivating locales. It's the side of the moon that's forever hidden from Earth's view due to the moon rotating at the same pace as it orbits our planet. Consequently, one side of the moon always faces us while the other remains concealed. But just how cold does it get there and why? The moon's temperature can fluctuate dramatically, depending on its exposure to sunlight. Lacking an atmosphere, there's no air to retain or distribute heat. Hence, the moon's surface solely absorbs heat from direct sunlight and releases it into space. This leads to extreme temperature shifts between day and night and across different lunar regions. Since the moon takes roughly 27 days to complete one rotation around its axis, its day and night cycles are much lengthier compared to Earth's. This translates to around 14 days of continuous sunlight followed by 14 days of total darkness on each side. During the lunar day, temperatures on the moon's surface can soar as high as 127 degrees Celsius or 260 degrees Fahrenheit at the equator. During the lunar night, temperatures can plummet to negative 173 Celsius or negative 280 degrees Fahrenheit at the equator. However, the coldest spots on the moon are found near the poles, where certain craters and crevices remain perpetually shadowed, never receiving sunlight. These areas, known as permanently shadowed regions, are predominantly located on the moon's dark side. Without any source of heat and solely relying on radiation for heat loss, these regions become incredibly cold, even colder than outer space itself. The lowest temperature ever recorded on the moon was captured by NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, equipped with the Diviner Lunar Radiometer, a specialized instrument for measuring lunar surface temperatures. In 2009, Diviner identified a temperature of negative 233 degrees Celsius, or negative 387 degrees Fahrenheit within a crater near the moon's south pole. This temperature surpasses that of Pluto with an average of negative 229 degrees Celsius, or negative 380 degrees Fahrenheit. Remarkably, this isn't even the moon's lowest attainable temperature. According to theoretical calculations, certain PSRs near the poles could plummet to temperature as frigid as negative 253 degrees Celsius, or negative 424 degrees Fahrenheit, merely 20 degrees above absolute zero. The lowest conceivable temperature in nature at negative 273 degrees Celsius. At such chilling temperatures, atoms cease their movement and all forms of matter freeze solid. But why is the dark side of the moon so incredibly cold? The explanation is straightforward. Devoid of atmosphere, sunlight, and warmth, it exists in perpetual darkness and frost, rendering it an inhospitable realm where survival is improbable. Yet, amidst its enigmatic allure, the dark side of the moon exudes a captivating beauty. Astronaut Aldrin, mesmerized by the sight of Earth rising over the lunar horizon, described it as the most breathtaking spectacle he had ever witnessed. Overwhelmed with emotion and gratitude at the sight of his home planet, a radiant blue and white jewel against the void of space, Aldrin likened the experience to a fairy tale or dream. In 2016, a tweet from Buzz Aldrin became viral where he wrote, We are all in danger. It is evil itself. The tweet was accompanied by a photo of a pyramid located at the South Pole. This tweet sparked widespread speculation and concern, purportedly warning of imminent danger and labeling a pyramid at the South Pole as evil itself. By stating, We are all in danger, and describing the pyramid as evil itself, Aldrin seemingly conveyed a message of grave concern regarding an unidentified threat. However, skepticism arises due to the lack of concrete evidence supporting the existence of the tweet. Despite claims that Aldrin deleted the tweet, no screenshots or reliable sources have corroborated its authenticity. Since Aldrin's lunar sojourn, scientists and researchers have continued their quest to unveil the mysteries of the moon's dark side. Among the most notable achievements in lunar exploration was China's successful landing of the Chang-4 probe and its rover, U-2-2, on the far side of the moon in January 2019. This marked the first successful touchdown of a spacecraft in this particular region, overcoming the hurdles of communication and navigation. The mission's primary goals were to investigate the geology, topography, and environment on the far side, 
along with conducting low-frequency radio astronomy observations. Among Chang 4's notable discoveries was the detection of mysterious glass globules on the far side's surface. These globules, translucent and spherical or dumbbell-shaped, differed from any previously known lunar minerals. They are thought to have formed from impacts by asteroids or meteorites that melted and solidified lunar soil. These globules hold promise for shedding light on the moon's impact history and evolution, as well as potential resources for future lunar settlements. Another surprising finding by Chang-4 was the identification of a radioactive rock on the far side of the moon. Using a spectrometer on board U-22, scientists detected gamma rays emitted by different elements, revealing a high concentration of thorium in the rock. Thorium, a radioactive element rare on Earth but plentiful on the moon, could offer valuable insights into lunar geology and resource potential. Thorium presents itself as a potential source of nuclear energy for future lunar missions. Similar to uranium, thorium possesses properties that enable it to fuel nuclear chain reactions. However, unlike uranium, which undergoes fission to release energy, thorium undergoes a series of nuclear reactions upon exposure to neutrons until it transforms into an isotope of uranium known as U233. This isotope readily undergoes fission and releases energy upon encountering another neutron. Several countries and organizations, including China and India, have displayed interest in utilizing thorium-based nuclear power for lunar missions. China, for instance, has initiated its first experimental thorium-based reactor in the Gobi Desert in 2021, with plans for another reactor capable of powering over 10,000 homes on Earth. Additionally, China aims to establish a permanent lunar base by 2030, with thorium potentially serving as a vital component of its energy infrastructure. India, boasting a substantial thorium reserve, has been researching its applications for decades and intends to leverage thorium for its upcoming lunar missions and settlements. Russia has also rekindled its interest in lunar exploration, launching Luna 25, its first lunar mission since 1976, with plans to land near the moon's south pole. Russia has expressed interest in developing thorium-based reactors for space endeavors. Furthermore, the far side of the moon offers an ideal setting for radio astronomy, shielded from interference and noise originating from Earth. Missions like Chang-4 have equipped low-frequency radio spectrometers to detect signals from the early universe, such as cosmic microwave background radiation and hydrogen line emission. These signals could provide insights into the origins and development of the cosmos, while also serving as a means to test theories regarding gravity and dark matter. Radio waves possess the ability to unveil concealed structures and phenomena in the universe, including black holes, pulsars, quasars, galaxies, and the cosmic microwave background radiation. Additionally, radio astronomy offers avenues to explore the beginnings and progression of the universe, alongside probing the potential existence of extraterrestrial life. However, terrestrial radio astronomy encounters numerous hurdles and constraints, notably interference from human-made sources such as television, radio, cell phones, satellites, and radar, which can overshadow faint signals from space. Atmospheric absorption and scattering further pose challenges, distorting and obstructing radio waves from reaching ground-based telescopes. Additionally, the limited frequency range restricts the detection of certain radio waves, as those longer than 10 meters are reflected by the Earth's ionosphere, rendering them unobservable from the ground. These challenges and constraints could potentially be tackled by situating a radio telescope on the far side of the moon, also known as the dark side, which is permanently turned away from the Earth. The far side of the moon offers numerous advantages for radio astronomy. One key advantage is the absence of radio interference and noise from Earth-based sources, the ionosphere, Earth-orbiting satellites, and the Sun's radio emissions resulting in radio silence. This creates an environment conducive to clearer and quieter observations of the radio sky, particularly during the lunar night. Moreover, the lack of atmosphere on the Moon means there is no absorption or scattering of radio waves, enhancing the resolution and sensitivity of the radio telescope. Access to ultra-long wavelengths is another benefit of placing a radio telescope on the far side of the moon. Such a telescope can observe the universe at wavelengths longer than 10 meters, corresponding to frequencies below 30 megahertz. These wavelengths are crucial for detecting cosmological or extrasolar planetary signatures that are predicted to be obscured by Earth's ionosphere when observed from the ground. 
They hold valuable information about the origin and evolution of the cosmos, including phenomena like the cosmic microwave background radiation and the hydrogen line emission. Additionally, these wavelengths aid in the detection and characterization of exoplanets and their atmospheres, providing further insights into planetary systems beyond our own. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up.